Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to be talking about creating distinct enter and leave animations with a single timeline. 90% of the time when people want to do enter and leave effects, I just recommend reversing a single tween and maybe even changing its speed to make it go a little bit faster on reverse. However, there are other times where people have requested to have a unique enter animation and a distinct leave animation. So right now when I mouse over the dark blue bar grows and when I mouse leave it's going to move over to the right. If I happen to do a quick enter leave I still have that reverse effect going on and it doesn't glitch at all. So if I fully commit to the mouse enter and then leave I get a distinct animation on the way out. Once we understand how to build simpler animations like this we can build more complex ones that have lots of moving parts. So even on this circle one here, if I don't commit and leave, I'll do a nice reverse, or if I fully commit, all those circles will move away in an interesting fashion. Unfortunately, beginners tend to try to solve this with separate enter and out timelines, but that can cause loads of issues with overriding immediate render, and you're likely to get very undesirable results. We're going to use a single timeline and custom logic to handle mouse leave while enter animation is playing, a mouse enter while animation is reversing, a mouse leave after enter animation has played, and a mouse leave while exit animation is playing. It may seem like a lot, but don't worry, I'm going to walk you through it step by step. We'll start by showing you exactly why two timelines is not a good solution, and then we'll work our way up. And although this lesson focuses mainly on mouse leave and mouse enter animations, these concepts can be applied to many other complex UI interactions. Let's go! I'm going to use this very simple demo to illustrate the issues with having two different timelines for enter and leave. Uh, right here on the stage we have our button. The HTML is quite simple. Um, the button itself has this light blue background. There's a bar div here that we can't see that's dark blue. And basically we're going to scale that bar and move it. So on a mouse enter we're going to do a scale X tween on the blue bar div. And then on mouse leave, it's going to move to the right. To make things super clear what's happening, on the button, I'm going to get rid of this overflow hidden by commenting it out. The next time I run, um, you'll see exactly what is happening, okay? So our button fades in, our mouse enter does a scale X tween, and then that blue div is just going to move over, okay? Now, that doesn't look all that great, uh, but for the purpose of this demo, it really helps to have that overflow hidden, turned off, moving forward. Now, let's go into our JavaScript and take a look at what's happening here, all right? We have some fairly straightforward setup here. We're setting the default duration to 1.5. I'm selecting my button. I'm doing an auto alpha tween on the wrapper, so we have a nice fade in. And I'm just initializing that bar with a scale X of zero and a transform origin left center. That means that when this page loads, we're not going to see the blue bar at all because it's scale X is zero and it's going to grow from the left to the right. Now here's where things get cool or interesting. We're going to have a separate enter timeline that's going to take that blue bar and it's going to do a scale X tween to its original scale of one. And then we're going to have a separate exit animation where we're going to simply take that bar and move its X position 200 pixels to the right. When we do a mouse enter on the button, we're going to tell the enter animation to play and we're going to on mouse leave tell the exit animation to play. All right. So nothing too crazy here. Let's start off again with a fresh run. You'll see the button fades in. If I do a mouse enter, we scale X to one. And on mouse leave, we do the X tween of 200, all right? All very basic stuff. And we think, hey, this is great. We're triggering two distinct timelines on each event. Now things get interesting though, if I do an additional mouse enter. Hmm, what happened there? Nothing. Let's do another mouse leave. What happened there? Nothing, all right? The issue here is that both of these events are set up to play timelines, all right? Once a timeline has played to the end, calling play again doesn't reset its playhead position to a time of zero. So if you remember from GSAP 3 Beyond the Basics, we talked about the restart method. So that's gonna bring the playhead back to the beginning when we mouse enter again. 
So let's run. So now I can mouse enter to have the enter animation play. I can mouse leave to exit and hopefully I can boom restart. What's going on there? Well, check this out. Another problem that we wouldn't see if overflow was hidden is that yes, I am restarting the enter animation, but my buddy here, the exit animation has animated to an X of 200. So now when I restart the enter, we still have the X moved all the way over to the right of that bar, all right? So one thing we could do to get around that is in my enter animation, we could say, hey, you know what? Let's do a very quick set and tell the bar that its X is going to go back to zero. So now the next time I run, hopefully this is fixed. Ah, I can do a mouse enter, I can leave, and then when I enter again, we reset the X and now everything happens great. And when I do another mouse leave, oh goodness, nothing happens. You see all the problems you can have with something that seems so simple to do? Well, the same problem we had with enter is happening with our exit. Calling play again isn't going to do anything. We also need to restart this animation every time we leave. So let's run and hopefully I've done enough cleanup here to get this to work. So let's enter. Let's leave, and then hopefully when I enter again, we're gonna reset that X and it worked nicely. And please, can I leave again? Yes, I can. Now it may seem that we made a lot of progress here, but as you may know, users don't just wait for your enter animation to finish and then casually roll off, all right? They're gonna do this crazy stuff like this. <laughs> and what do you have now? You have both these animations constantly restarting and you get this really bad glitchiness, which I hope you do not find acceptable, okay? And remember, even if you did think this was okay, every time you wanna add something new to your timeline, like maybe in the exit, you want the opacity to go to zero, that's gonna cause another thing that you're going to have to reset in the enter animation. Because again, I can mouse enter, and then when I leave, if that element fades out from the exit timeline, I have to reset its opacity in the enter timeline. And this is just for the most basic animation of one element. Imagine you had a much more complex animation with multiple elements. Having to reset all these properties is gonna be a big pain in the neck. To avoid these issues, I'm going to put all my animations in one timeline and use some custom logic to handle a variety of user interactions. Over here in Adobe Animate, I've done a mock-up of the animation so that I can illustrate all the different use cases we're going to be accounting for. You'll notice that the blue bar grows from the left to the right, and then we hit this exit marker here. Past the exit marker, we're gonna have our exit animation where the blue bar moves over to the right, as you've seen in our code. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our animation pause when it gets to the exit point, okay? That's gonna be built into our timeline. So the first and most common use case we're going to have is that on mouse enter, the playhead will play all the way through until the exit point and then pause. If the user does a mouse leave on or after the exit point, we will continue to play the timeline forward till the end. The next case is if the user does a mouse leave before we reach the exit point, the animation will reverse back to the beginning and that's gonna help us avoid any glitchiness of a quick mouse enter, mouse leave. So maybe it'll play forward and then just go back quickly. Another case we'll account for is if while the exit animation is playing, if you do a mouse leave, the animation will continue to play. And lastly, if during the exit animation, the user does a mouse enter again, we're going to restart from the beginning and again play until we reach the exit unless the user does a mouse leave. And the big part of getting this to work is knowing the time of this exit point. Let me walk you through the code and show you how we'll do it. All right, I modified our previous file to use just one timeline. This timeline has the first tween that changes the scale X and the second one changes its X property to 200. So again, I love keeping things simple when we're doing these complex topics. The timeline's gonna be paused by default our mouse enter is going to tell the timeline to play. I don't have a mouse leave set up yet, all right? So just to show you when I mouse enter, 
We're going to play that timeline all the way through. A big part of the solution involves pausing the timeline before the exit. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use an add pause, which as you can guess, will pause the timeline. So let's do a run. And now when I mouse enter, we'll play and it will naturally pause. And as you may imagine, if I mouse leave, nothing is going to happen. However, the way things are now, if I mouse enter again, we'll do another play. We'll take care of that in a bit. But the next thing I wanna take care of is the use case where if the user does a mouse leave before we get to the add pause. Now in order to know whether or not our playhead is before or after the add pause, we need to know what time it's being inserted, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an additional variable here and I'm gonna say let exit time equal zero. And then right after the add pause is added, I'm going to set the exit time equal to the timeline's current duration. And once I've done that, I've sort of broken the chaining that I had going on there. So I'll need to do a TL right here, okay? So basically what's gonna happen is when this timeline's created, it's gonna create this first tween. It's going to use the default duration of 1.5. We're going to instantly add a pause, and at this time in the timeline's creation, the duration is going to be exactly where the add pause was added. So if you don't believe me, we could do a very quick uh, console.log and put in exit time. And now the next time I run, we should be able to open the console and see what we got. So let's go to my browser console here, and we get our 1.5 there. All right, so we now know where that pause is added and what I can do is use that in some conditional logic. So for my mouse leave here, I'm going to say, hey, if tl.time is less than exit time, then I'm going to tell tl to reverse. So let's watch that happen. I'm going to mouse enter and then when I mouse leave, before we get to the add pause, you'll see we're doing that nice smooth reverse. We're not restarting a timeline and glitching out. So basically, if I don't commit to the rollover, I'm not gonna get to see the awesome leave animation. However, if the full enter animation does play, and then I do a mouse leave, I want to play forward. So, inside of that mouse leave, I'm gonna add another condition. I'm gonna say, all right, if that isn't true or else, let's tell the TL that it can in fact play forward. So here, when I run, this should work really well. We're going to be able to now play or reverse, but if I commit and go all the way to the end here, now when I mouse leave, I'm gonna have my time greater than the exit time, and we're going to play forward. Sweet. However, I now have the case where if I mouse enter again, nothing happens, all right? So every time you add one little feature, you gotta figure out another bug that you added. So on my mouse enter, I wanna see if the playhead is past that exit time, and if so, I'm just gonna restart. So basically what I'm going to say is something like, you know, if the enter animation is playing, then we're going to play and if the exit animation is playing then we're going to restart on mouse enter so the condition is going to be set up like this i'm going to say if tl.time is less than exit time that means the enter animation is playing then we're just going to say hey you know what tl.play this could also mean that the playhead is way at the beginning of the timeline and we haven't interacted with the button yet or else if we're animating the exit animation, we're going to say tl.restart, all right? So once we have the exit animation playing, if we mouse leave and then mouse enter again, this is when this condition will fire. So let's give it a run. And now I can mouse enter to play. I can trigger the exit, and if I mouse enter again, it's just going to restart, all right? It's probably pretty uncommon that once the exit plays, someone's gonna come back in, but if they do, I think it's a nice solution to restart. Uh, the big thing we have here is that if anybody ever does any of this nonsense in the beginning, we get that really smooth reversal going on. So once they commit, we've seen the full enter animation play, 
then they can do the outro animation. Let me jump into my CSS here. Let's get rid of this overflow hidden. Let's run again. And now we'll see the full effect. All right, with that overflow hidden, it actually looks really nice. Now again, I have this time set up to be quite long for the tweens. So I think for my duration, you know, I'd probably just go with the default of 0 0.5, you know, it's definitely zippier and looks really cool. And again, we can do this in out stuff and we've accomplished having our custom leave animation and we never get any weird glitchiness. And effects like this look even better when you have multiple buttons set up using the same settings, all right? So we can do like very quick sort of scrolling through and you just get a little bit of a playful blip from that side animation or you can watch the whole thing and then you get these really nice kind of synchronized animations going on. And although this is a very sort of basic, if you will, effect with one element that's animating, I'm using the exact same approach in this example here. If I mouse leave before the exit time, we're going to reverse that animation. Or if we go all the way to the exit time, we'll play a custom animation on the way out. And then if we roll over again, we can restart. So I can go kind of really nuts with this and it's not going to break. And again, it's more complex because there's more things animating, there's more time, uh, but it's really quite smooth. Now, I'm not gonna go through how this entire animation was built, but I am going to show you that our buttons basically have the same stuff going on. For the mouse enter, we're checking the time. If it's less than the exit time, we play or else we restart. On mouse leave, if the time is less than exit time, we reverse or else we play. Okay, so it's really cool that GSAP has this time hook in there that we can tap into to figure out the current time of the playhead. And if I scroll on up here, you'll see that we have this add pause and I also have the exit time being recorded here. Now the reason for putting this right in the timeline right here is because I can do something like make the duration of all these say one, all right? And then the next time I run, I've drastically changed the timing of my animation, but I'm dynamically remembering where exit time is, okay? So I don't have to go back in my code and hard code some value in. Uh, it's automatically flexible enough to know that exit time is right where that add pause is. So for your homework, be sure to build your own custom and enter leave animations and post them on Twitter and tag at SnorkelTV so I can enjoy them and share them with the world. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. See you next week. If you enjoyed this video, head on over to creativecodingclub.com and unlock all my premium Greensock courses for one low price. See you in the club.